Hello stampers, Jackie Ballhouse from Clomp and Stampers. Cross your fingers that I can get this video done without any big old thunder boomers. It's storming outside, but I thought we're gonna give it a try anyway. As you know, I've been showing you a lot of projects in the last week or so using the Magnolia Lane bundle and suite of products. Well, we got one more project for you. Now, up until this point, I've been doing a lot of coloring of the Magnolia with the Stampin' Blends, which I absolutely love. But today I wanna to show you something a little bit different and how you can get a really beautiful kind of artsy look using an aqua painter in your ink pads. Now, don't forget, this is the featured bundle for my August online class. There's still time to get it. So hop on over to my website. You'll find all the details over there. But basically, the class is 12 step-by-step -step tutorials all using the Good Morning Magnolia stamp set and bundle and coordinating projects. You'll have so many different ideas and different ways to use this that you'll be stamping for a long, long time. Class is free with the purchase or you can purchase the class. So enough of that. Hop over there if you'd like the details. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel here and share it with your crafty friends. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you'd like a Stampin' Up! catalog, make sure to let me know. I'd love to be your demonstrator. I'd love to send you a catalog. Now, that's all the chit chat we got for today. Let's get Stampin' and I wanna show you a way to do an easy watercolor that it's really not hard. Anybody can do this even though it looks a little difficult because you know me, it's gotta be simple or we don't do it. Let's flip the camera down and get started. Here's a look at these cards. Now you'll notice we've embossed using white embossing powder on these. Now I kind of am using the magic of TV here and I've done that already. And I don't know, you can kind of see the shine there. So the big magnolia flower is already bossed, embossed on a piece of watercolor paper. Now I don't, I've kind of strayed away, I guess, from watercolor paper in the past and I've used the shimmery, uh, white paper for watercoloring, which works great. However, I've kind of been experimenting and I'm back on a kick with the watercolor paper because it truly does give a completely different look. Um, there's a lot of qualities to the watercolor paper that I think I'm liking better right now. But you know me, I go on tangents and I always like something different. So for today, we're using watercolor paper. Now I'm gonna put these two aside. Um, here's just a peek at the stamp set we're using. I've got that big old flower embossed on here. And if you don't know how to do heat embossing, let me know because I have other videos that show how to do it and I'll send you the link to it. But I didn't want to take up your time today uh, showing you that because we're going to get to the water coloring on this. Now, fingers crossed that the colors I picked work because, you know, usually I practice a card first before I go to do my video. But this one, I'm going to do the same idea as I did on the other ones, but we're using different colors. Now, I have Highland Heather and Gorgeous Grape. Let's just pull those up here. So I've got a light purple and a darker purple, and I'm just using my clear blocks. And I'm gonna put about half of it on that Highland Heather to pick up some ink, flip it over, do the other half on the Gorgeous Grape. So this is what I'm gonna be picking up my color from. Now I have an aqua painter here, I was gonna say filled with water. Hopefully we have enough. We might have to refill part way through. Um, with an aqua painter, it's basically a paintbrush with the, um, the holder here for the water. So you don't have to be dipping in water all the time. This water will flow through to the brush. So when you start, you wanna just squeeze it a little bit, get that water flowing. You can see it's coming through on there. So that's how I want. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do kind of one petal at a time, very similar to when I was coloring with Stampin' Blends, but I felt that gets the best look here. Kind of got a little bit too much water there. And I'm gonna color it in with just water. Then I'm gonna come and I am going to pick up some of that lighter purple and I'm just dabbing it. And you can see how that flows within those embossed lines. That's why by putting that water down first, it kind of stayed right into that embossed area. Then I'm gonna come and pick up just a little bit of that dark, and we're gonna tap it down here at the end. And see how the water just lets it kind of do its thing? Um, you know, you can come up on the sides here a little bit if you want. Now at any point, if you feel like you have too much water on there, and this is kind of the beauty of watercolor paper, you can actually just use your brush. And I've got just an old towel here, and I can kind of pick it up and see how I brush it, dab it on the towel, that dries it up there. So let's go ahead and do another petal. And like I said, by doing one petal at a time, it'll keep the color within those petals. So just kind of dabbing on the lighter color and then 
while it's nice and wet there and you have that water for it to flow, we're going ahead and doing the other color. Then I'm taking my brush and I'm kind of cleaning it off on that old towel because I, do, I don't want that dark to show up right away as I do this next leaf. So we can just kind of tap it in there, let the water do its work, let the water kind of let that color flow in there. And then we're gonna come and see, and there again, you can see I got way too much. So we can just pick it up with this brush and again, you know, with this watercolor paper, even if you get, if ink's too dark, like here, if I think this is too dark, I can come up and I can kind of pick it up and lighten it up. So completely different results, I think, than when you, um, when you use the gloss or the shimmery white. See, we just got way too much water. So let's pick that up there. And then we're gonna kind of let that one dry and let's come up here and do this one. Um, you want to be careful to not squeeze your aqua painter. That's kind of how you get too much water going. And then bring in our dark. I'm just bringing that dark in from the center and then kind of using the shading lines that is on the image to add some more of the dark in there. And as we go ahead and get this whole thing colored in, it'll kind of flow together. You know, to me, flowers, when you see flowers out in nature, you know, the color is not perfectly defined in certain areas. So that's where... I kind of like getting the light and the dark. And you can see as we're coloring this, you start to see the flower more. You weren't really seeing it with that just white on white embossing. But see how it's coming to life. So we're gonna just keep going here for a second and finish up our flower. we go we're gonna call it good on the flower part and then for our greens why don't we go ahead and we're gonna try granny apple green and what did I get here um, call me clover so we'll see what those two look like for our leaves so again we kind of got some purple going there we're gonna put some water down on that leaf and then we're gonna come in with the granny apple green it's kind of I'm just really kind of dabbing it in there and it stays within the lines because of that embossing and then let's just dab in a little bit of the call me clover here and see what that looks and kind of get our different colored green. Ooh, I think I'm going to like this one. So again, we'll do, do a leaf like so. Come in water first, then bring in your lighter color and then go ahead and dab some of that darker in there. And again, if you don't like it, it's too dark, just pick some up with this aqua painter. It'll pick it up and you can add more of that color or just kind of play around with it. So let's go ahead and finish up our leaves. There we go. You can see how we've got the different colors going on there. You know what, we need to put a little, we'll put a little green on the, the stem there. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure, kind of as I was going, when you've got different sections touching each other, let them dry before you go from section to section because otherwise, um, that's when you're gonna get those colors bleeding into each other. Now, the one thing I did on those other ones is I went around the outside of the flower with a very light color. I think in one I used balmy blue and on one I used the soft sea foam. I got balmy blue here, but I think it'll, it makes the flower a little bit more distinct. Make sure your aqua painter is clean because we don't want the green and purple. And again, we make sure you got water coming out of there. And then what I did is I just kind of dabbed some water around the outside of the flower and then I just, See, and again, too dark, pick it up. You can just dab some of this balmy blue okay, around the edges, and that'll make the lines of that flower more distinct, okay? You just kind of want it to flow. Don't You don't want any like perfect lines in there, just enough to add a little bit of color. So water first, because that helps that color just move around and flow. If it's too dark, use that water to pick it up. Okay, now remember, this again is watercolor paper, so it does that color flows a little bit more um, than it will on your shimmery, shimmery white. Don't try doing this on regular whisper white. Oh, see, we got some green bleeding here. We can just push it back there and pick it up. So, until it's dry, you can really do a lot with this color. Um, make sure you come down in there so we can get the edges. 
and we're bleeding a little bit there that's okay you know nice thing about watercolor it's okay if it goes out of the lines a little bit it, um, that's the look of watercolor so let's just finish whoa way too much get some water see how we can just pick that up even with your finger you can pick some of it up there we go now let's just get some color for the inside there I'm going to just use my Mango Melody here, and oh, I got some on the inside. Since I'm not using very much, I'm going to just use what I have on the inside of my pad here. Make sure my brush is clean, and the inside is pretty heavily embossed, so you're going to want to just dab that in there, and then give it some time to dry, and then even dab it off, because um, it's got to get down in that embossing. So there we go. That is how I watercolored using my ink pads and my blender pen. I kind of like those colors. I really, truly did not know how it was going to turn out. So I do have a piece of the gorgeous grape here. Uh, my watercolor paper was cut to five and three and three quarters. And then this one is five and an eighth and three and seven eighths. And then let's put the, ooh, oh, I like that. That's a piece of purple posy. You know, that Highland Heather really goes well with the, um, the purple posy. It, it kind of Purple Posy is a lighter shade. And as you know, that ink pad is not available yet. Um, however, the cardstock just coordinates really nicely with a lot of the other colors. So there you go. And again, I'll have all the information about all the supplies I used on the blog post. You'll get a link down in the description of the video to send you over there. Don't forget about the online class using these products. Um, these cards are not part of the, the class, but now you know how to make them. So this is just another idea to go along with the 12 that you get with the class. Plus I've uh, featured several other projects I'm using it. So take the ones I've just done videos and posted along with the 12 that are part of the class. You're going to have so many different ideas with the stamp set. You can stamp forever with it. So again, any questions, make sure to let me know. I love to share simple stamping with you. And even though this may not look like simple stamping, it truly was simple. So give it a try. So until I stamp again, have a stamp happy day.